Recently, the federal government and uh, some of the major universities have uh, called to start to engage in geoengineering. And uh, I don't know if anybody has reviewed any of the stuff that I sent out earlier about geoengineering. Um, the uh, what I have here, these are all documents from from like the DOD, Global Research. These are all government documents from you know stemming back to 1978 about proposed geoengineering, geoengineering studies, um, independent studies, and any of the stuff is available for the, for the committee members. But as of today. As of actually, as of March 24th, um, the federal government and some of the major universities have—they're actually calling to start to engage in um, geoengineering of the environment to, in their words, to try to combat uh, climate change or, or you know, other situations. So it'll be a man-made. It'll be a man's inter interaction with the uh, environment to to adjust the environment. So this bill, um, H6011, is, 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 it's essentially a licensing bill that would, uh, anybody that wants to engage in any type of uh, uh, environmental engineering would have to apply for the license and um, be totally transparent to the public and have a, uh, apply for the license and um, go through all the proper channels of licensing. Uh, I have some witnesses here that um, are also know more about the law of uh, introducing something like this. And um, I just had one thing I wanted to read from uh, uh, Rosalind Peterson, who is, uh, she, she's been involved with this for a couple of decades, she's out in uh, um, California. She she's with the Agricultural Defense Coalition, so they've been following this and uh, um, actually testified in front of the United Nations um, in one of their committee hearings, discussing this actual uh, process, what they would be doing, and. Uh, and she says, uh, it should be noted that the UK Parliament and the US House Science Te Te Technology Committee held hearings in 2009 and 2010 on the global geoengineering governance. So that's with the actual, our federal government with the uh, um, UK Parliament. And uh, we're now faced with the reality of ongoing and upcoming geoengineering and the consequences of these actions. Uh, it's it's uh, important for for each state to take actions to protect their economy, the resources, and a myriad of uh, um, uh, plans for the future. You know, this this addresses the uh, oceans, the agriculture, the forestry, our economy, human health, and uh, it, you know could negatively impact all of these programs and uh, and uh, I would just encourage everybody to you know have a look at this and uh, um, do a little bit of research and, and uh, certainly support this because it's here right now and your record droughts and then all of a sudden it's been raining cats and dogs what's happening well it's important to understand George that when the climate engineers control the spigot. They can turn it on and off as they wish. And for those that don't believe this can be done on this kind of a scale, you should, they simply haven't done their research. When you fill the atmosphere with particulates, you affect the hydrological cycle dramatically. So we can speculate as to the agenda of why the spigot